arrival of any new car always creates a stir. But when it's the first new car for 10 years from the most evocative name in motoring, Lamborghini, the anticipation is apocalyptic. A new breed of raging bull that must follow the devil itself, the Diablo. In order to pay for their very survival, Lamborghini have now sold their soul to Audi. And the question is, can they continue the blood rush of the past with the Murcielago? Visually, it inherits much of the Diablo's lines, but they've been tidied up. Its narrow waistline has been filled in, the rebellious look tamed down a little. No monstrous rear wings anymore. While the Diablo was styled by Marcello Gandini, the Murcielago has been penned by a Belgian. It's still a stunning machine, but it's not so much of a teenage tearaway. It's grown up on the outside, and the same can be said for the inside. You still enter via the evocative scissor doors, but you're no longer greeted by a schoolboy's bedroom filled with bits of carbon fibre and clumsy plastic switchgear. Instead, you're surrounded by discreet two-tone leather. The Audi influence is obvious. But any worries that the Lambo's got any quieter are silenced by a twist to the key. <laughs> the stench of slipping clutch than the aroma of burning rubber. Because since the early Diablos, four-wheel drive has been a Lamborghini trait. And now they've got to add an insult to injury by installing traction control. Both were introduced because Lamborghini felt some of their customers needed a bit of security. But I'm sorry, this is not a Honda Civic, it's an Italian supercar. And if it scares you, you should go and buy something else. This may be the first Lamborghini to have a six-speed gearbox, but you never need two of them because the 7,800 RPM red line is good enough for nearly 90 miles an hour in second. I have to admit that in everyday use, you wouldn't really know it was four-wheel drive. In a straight line or on the exit of some corners, the variable system will put 95% of the torque to the rear wheels, but it still only does it when it wants to, even with the traction control switched off. Too much power too soon will push the front of the car wide, so you need to be patient with the throttle before flooring it and letting the Murcielo go dance. The famous V12 engine now sits some two inches lower in the chassis to help with the handling and it's been stretched from 6 to 6.2 litres, raising the power to 570 bhp. The Mercy Elego will take you to 60 in just four seconds and on to 205 miles an hour, should you so wish. And it will also relieve you of £158,000 for the pleasure of doing it. Glorious though it is, the Murcielago has lost some of the raw passion of its parents. There's not even a rear-wheel drive option anymore. It's joined the ranks of supercars suitable for everyday use, which is what Lambo intended all along. But in so doing, it's lost a little of what I loved about Lamborghinis. They used to be outrageous, now they're almost respectable. The Mercy Elego sets my pulse racing as soon as I see it, but perhaps I must now look elsewhere for my ultimate supercar. Like just down the road to Modena, where they make this mouth-watering 7.3 litre, 580 horsepower Pagani Zonda. And you can find out if it fulfills my dreams when I test it later in the series.